Hello there and welcome to our look ahead to what the papers will be bringing us tomorrow. With me are Peter Spiegel, the uh, news editor of the Financial Times and the broadcaster and campaigner Lynn Foltzwood. It's good to have you both in the studio. Thank you. Can be here. Let's have a look at some of the front pages now. And Peter's paper, the Financial Times, leads with Donald Trump's order pulling out of a free trade deal with Pacific Rim countries. The paper says he's signalling he will put protectionism at the heart of economic policy. Telegraph says the new US president has vowed to make the special relationship between Britain and America a little bit more special. The eye concentrates on the political row following reports that a Trident nuclear missile test went wrong last year. It was unarmed, of course, and it says the whole thing's descended into farce with the defense secretary refusing to discuss the matter in the Commons. But the Metro quotes a White House official who has apparently told CNN that the unarmed missile did self-destruct off the coast of Florida. The Guardian also focuses on that malfunctioning missile, but looks ahead to tomorrow's Supreme Court judgment about whether the government has to consult MPs before invoking Article 50. And finally, the Express goes, goes it alone, hailing a revolutionary new patch for arthritis sufferers. It's not uh, ladies first tonight, it's Americans first tonight. Peter, I'm starting with you, uh, mate. First time ever. I'm starting with you, mate. Sorry. <laughs> Trump's Pacific trade exit, um, putting protectionism at the heart of policy. That's, if I may say so, your spin on it. He's simply putting America first. He's putting America first. That's right. <laughs> and the thing is, it's not just the specific trade deal, which which is he announced today. They put the executive order forward to to pull out of that. He also gathered sort of a group of, of American CEOs in the White House, his first official meeting of his presidency, and told them all, "You move your plants overseas. We're going to tax you on your imports." He's going to call the Mexican and and uh, Canadian prime ministers and tell them that he's going to renegotiate NAFTA. I mean, this is the first thing he's going to do. He signals the most important thing he's going to do. And, you know, you talk to, to economic experts and they're all worried about this, that, that, you know, this is how the Great Depression happened. You started imposing tariffs uh, up front and, and there's a lot of nervousness that the, the global system that's been established since World War II based on, you know, lowering tariffs and, and trade barriers is really at risk here. And it, it is just very, very symbolic that he's made this his first action. Yeah, Lynn, yeah. experts don't matter though, do they? They don't <laughs> matter. We don't care about experts no, not anymore. No, that. It keeps using And language. it's America first, like, and he's the American president. It, Makes sense. The thing about this guy, if he's so clever, he can't put figures and things. He always tells you things like, it's going to be a very major border tax. And then he, he says to these elite business people, mainly men, who are in, or probably all men. Almost all men. There was one woman. Yeah, 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 yeah. come on, let's get some women in there, Trump. Um, and yeah. clever women. Uh, I don't see that happening very but, often. No, it, it said to the businessmen, for example, things like one of them, Dale, I think his name was, he turned him and said, Dale, you know, you can build monstrous, I won't do the American accent. Right? <laughs> I love this you can do monstrous special buildings. We'll fast track you to get them. Monstrous special? Mm -mm. What way is this for a president to talk? I mean, it does resonate with his voters. I mean, this simple language using these big words, these small words, uh, that does actually when you talk to, to political communicators in the U.S., they say he's actually quite effective at this. The, the, a lot of the criticism, though, is is for, coming from with his own party, which is interesting, because the yeah. Republican Party has been the party that has advocated for free trade for generations. And it's interesting because you know, one of the things that Senator John McCain said with one of his predecessors as a Republican nominee for president is this is as much about geostrategy as it is about trade. This was about getting our allies in Asia, Japan, yeah. Australia, yeah. New Zealand, it's that Canada, bigger picture, isn't it? against the yeah. Chinese. Yeah. And, and suddenly, he, 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 the, the argument is he doesn't see that bigger picture. Everything's transactional for him. Oh, it's everything. Trump mm. and Trump's business, mm. I suspect. Like, it's going to be filthy rich, even filthier rich. But, 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 but okay, can but, I just make one point that yeah. I agree with him on? Because I, you might remember I did a review for the government last year, an independent review, where one of the things I was criticism that I was making, and it was all about unsafe, dangerous products and recalls mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It was about business. And we've neglected business, I think, because every single thing I seem to buy now is made overseas. We right. don't have manufacturing anymore. So to that extent, I agree with them. That, 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 that is the point, isn't it, Peter? Because, I mean, you know, I, I was the LA correspondent for the BBC in the early and, and mid-1990s. NAFTA came in, jobs went. They just left wholesale and nothing was done about those communities where those jobs disappeared from. Absolutely like nothing. And, and, and we're hearing this now from, from, from Lynn and from, from, from the UK. There is a sense that certainly for, from his supporters, 
that he is on their side. Yeah. He's making an effort, and that resonates. And if you heard about the states he mentioned uh, when he talked about this, he talked about Pennsylvania, he talked about Ohio, he talked about Michigan, he yeah. talked about North Carolina. He These won. are states that he won, and mm -hmm. he won there because of this exact, the, the, this, this voter, this, this yeah. you know, sort of working class white voter who is in Appalachia or, or in, in, yeah. in those regions who lost their manufacturing jobs since, since NAFTA. Mm. So he is, look, he, there, there's no doubt that even people who are anti-Trump agree that there is problems with, with global trade policy now because it's the same voter in Middle England who voted for Brexit, the same voter who voted for Trump in, in Michigan. You're seeing the same voter in, in, in France supporting Le Pen. This is a problem that they have not addressed. Yeah. And the question is whether throwing up tariffs is the solution. Is, is the solution. And, that, and, that, and that's why the problem with Scotland, because industry all went when yeah. I lived old, in Scotland. All, all, all disappeared, thank God yeah. for North, North, North Sea Oil up there, some people would say. That we um, had. But, but interestingly, you know, you're saying that you know, the world has woke, woken up to the problems of globalization at Davos. Didn't look like it. No. No, they weren't talking like about it, were they? at all. Yeah. But okay. that was mainly Can... blokes again who are having a very nice time. <laughs> all right, okay. Uh, staying with the FT, um, uh, Lynn, lukewarm welcome for May's pledge to yeah. nurture world leading industry. Yeah, this is supposed to be a new industrial strategy into world leading industries or leading to world. Uh, and as I jump towards the end of it, Carolyn Fairbairn, a woman, Director General of the CBI, said it was better to have an industrial strategy than not. So it's been damned by all sorts of people with faint praise, this industrial strategy. And she said that given that state spending accounts for 43% of gross domestic product, we need to have a plan on how to invest that money. This doesn't look like a very good new plan. It looks like a kind of mishmash of old stuff. Well, that's kind of why we wanted to put it on the front page. It's because yeah. the review we got in calling around to our, to our business sources was this had been hyped to the hilt. This was going to be a big... Yeah paper to, to lay out the, the government's position on this. And it basically was a warmed over position of, of, of things that she had, she had announced before. Um, now, look, it's a green paper, it's a discussion paper, um, but I think it was important for our readers in particular to have that up front because we felt, look, if the government's gonna come out and say this is our new industrial strategy, this is our response, frankly, to the same voter we're talking about yeah. uh, with Trump, yeah. which is this Middle England voter who, exactly. who feels he has less to do. What, how, if this response seems to be a bit empty, and well, I, think, I think we had a caller on that one. You compare okay. it to Trump. And I wrote down the edge here. Would Trump call it a discussion document? No, he wouldn't. He'd say you're having this, Get it done. and then you can argue the points about it later. And yeah. maybe when, when is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, I, I think <laughs> sometimes it's a good thing when sometimes you give you've them got to be a direct. mealy mouth piece mm. of stuff like this. All right, which is only on your okay. front page. It's on nobody else's. Interesting. Nobody's Interesting. It. Let's go to the Daily Telegraph then. This is their take on that whole thing. Trump promises closer ties with UK, Peter. So they're making it clear that this relationship, this bilateral relationship, it's special. And, and, and that special relationship is going to be preeminent, that it's going to work. Now, um, what's your view on that? Well, I mean, it, it is interesting that they have invited Theresa May as the first foreign head of government to, yeah. to come to Washington. So that is symbolic. And, and, and the one thing I've learned about living in this country is that the Brits obsess about this special relationship, so it's not a bad diplomatic uh, move yeah. either. I think, though, I, we're deluding ourselves to think that Donald Trump is going to make a bilateral trade deal with the UK at the front of the queue. I mean, right. first of all, we actually have two years uh, before Brexit actually happens. Mm -hmm. But, you know, look, we're talking about Pacific trade deals. We're look, talking about, you know, other things that are much higher on the agenda right now when it comes to trade. Suddenly turning around and saying, "Oh yeah, and by the way, we'll have we'll have a, a friendly trade deal with the UK." Even you have two countries that that that, that like each other and are allies with each other. These things take almost a decade to get mm. to, to, to. We saw a, a Canada EU deal. I mean, Canada, you know, this evil uh, trade monster that the EU had had to block. <laughs> so I, I think we have a lot of nice words coming out of the White House right. today. Um, we saw Sean Spicer say nice things about the Prime Minister showing okay. up, and but I'm not sure it's it, more but, than but this or isn't Lynn. I mean, how does all that square? Um, with what you were saying a little bit earlier, that you know, it, it, it's a sort of it's a one-way thing for Donald Trump. It's a transactional Look, thing. You know, it's a zero-sum game. I win, you lose. How are we going to get a really great it, trade deal if he's looking out for American workers? If you look at the bottom line, square? we've never had a really great have we? A really great trade deal with the States. We do more with Scotland, which is 5 million people, than we do with 300 million people in the United mm. States. We talk about this special relationship. They never talk about it in the States, do they, honestly? No, although it's interesting, no. having spent, spent... No would have done. No. no. Well, I, I would say, though, on trade and economics, no. But if you look at, for instance, I spent eight years covering the Pentagon, and what would struck mm. me very frequently is you would go in and, and see, you know, people positioned in senior, sensitive Pentagon positions 
relations, and they'd be Brits. And so on military intelligence, oh. there is that special well, relationship. Clever. Yeah, yeah. Well, just and there is there is a shared sharing yeah. intelligence, sharing in military secrets that happens between two countries that no other two countries share. That actually but, really uh, is where the yeah, special relationship is. Yes, exactly. Well, on this yeah. kind of stuff, this is all symbolism to me. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So we all speak it. We all speak all right. English. Okay. Stay with the Telegraph, then, uh, Lynn. Also U.S. contradicts it, Fallon also. on Trident failure. Because um, he's saying, I can't say anything because national security, blah, blah, blah. The Americans are spilling the beans. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you'd think he would have known that because people in the comments, this was just for him who didn't see it today, and I did actually watch it. Um, Fallon was, uh, uh, is he Sir or Lord or something? I don't know what he sir. is. Michael. Sir. Yeah. yeah. I don't like these titles, so I'll just call him Michael. Well, um, okay. In the Commons, he was talking today, <laughs> yeah. and uh, apparently not knowing the Americans were spilling the beans, because eventually a backbencher stood up and said, and by the way, do you know that there's an American mm. spilling the beans? Now, why didn't they come better briefed on that? Yeah. And also yesterday, when you saw Theresa May on, on the Mar show, where she was asked four times, mm -hmm. that was frankly a pathetic response for a minister who still enjoys some uh, credibility from mm. us and she has to sharpen up her act and get better advisors and better PR advisors. But but the Trident missile system it is from the United States they yes. they have a say in when it's tested do they? Well why do you think it was done in Florida because exactly. the US Navy has to oversee the testing. So they can say what they like about it. Well I gotta say I have some sympathy for the government on this one. I mean first of all missile failures happen with some regularity. I mean, I covered the Pentagon. This just happened to be a very badly timed missile failure. Right, right. And America. The other thing I will say is, if you have a nuclear deterrent, you don't tell the world it doesn't work. That it doesn't work, exactly. And so, <laughs> I had some sympathy for the Prime Minister on Sunday. You do not go public with the fact that your deterrent doesn't work because it's not a deterrent anymore. But, yeah, so. but, 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 but I suppose the point is, you say, well, you know, uh, for national security reasons, I can't comment. Yeah, she we was no, not part of the agree. discussion. Yeah. Shut but the whole thing down. a heck of a lot of jobs depend upon this. Yep. We don't fire these missiles very often because they're extremely expensive. I think I heard something like four years was the last time. Right. Now, we have got a huge investment in something, we're not even quite sure, sure that it, works it works that well. All right, okay, American. which which takes us to the front of the Metro <laughs> crash oh. test dummies. US trips up May and fallen over Trident failure. That's a good headline. So for the, Metro, the, isn't the Metro it? Right. is showing the others the way. <laughs> <laughs> all right, themselves. all right, okay. Uh, we're running out of time, so I think uh, okay. we are going to go to um, a, a very, very quick look at the Express, actually. May must fast track Brexit if the judges back legal well, challenge big decision from the Supreme Court, uh, uh, Peter, tomorrow. Coming tomorrow morning. And this is one of the, the routes we expect the government to go, which is if they lose and, mm -hmm. and the, the High Court says you must go to Parliament before you invoke Article 50, the divorce clause in the EU treaties, that they will just put out a one or two sentence law that says we give the Prime Minister a right to, to trigger Article 50. Uh, that, is, that is basically what what Tory backbenchers are, are, are suggesting in this story. The Guardian has an has a interesting story that makes the argument, although not very convincingly, that, that legal advice says that you can't go that way because you might run into appeals later, farther down the line. If they lose the this case... What happened with Brexit, the referendum? Well, we, we're badly drafted, well, not very well drafted legislation, and here we could end up with some more. Th and that's the argument there. That if you want a legislation that's actually going to hold up under legal scrutiny, you need to go through a longer process than a one-sentence bit of legislation. Sure, sure. All right, finally, we're going to link two stories. We're oh. going to link the missile <laughs> and Trident, and we're going to link... A story that's been running oh, throughout the day, the problems cartoon? potentially with um, browning your food a little bit too yes. much uh, and the possibility that it might uh, show signs of cancer, certainly in uh, test animals. But this is the Matt cartoon. This is the Navis latest sub. It's on the lethal overcooked <laughs> roast <Most> potatoes. potatoes. <laughs> um, there's a real sense that the roast potatoes would work better than the, uh, your average tribe. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and you know, the, the, I'm the, the, probably the health expert out <laughs> the pair of us here. Yeah, yeah. I think this is a terrible story in a way. We have to stop baffling people with all the things that are bad for them because they just give up. Smoking. Drinking too much yeah. and being overweight. Right. If you can crack those three things, then Britain would be much happier. All right. Okay, Peter, you're not going to brown your toast too much tomorrow. Never. Golden. Never. I've stopped completely. It's got to be gold. Exactly. All right. <laughs> Lynn, Peter, thank you so much for uh, joining us for uh, a look at some of uh, Fleet Street's finest work. Including this. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Great work. That's it for the papers. Many, many, many thanks to our guests, Peter and to Lynn. Uh, stay with us. Much more coming up. Uh, now it's time for the weather.